Hey there, welcome back to SimTech channel. You are looking at the 400 kilovolt power system switch yard, and on your left is its one line diagram representation. In this tutorial, we'll be breaking down this 400 kilovolt one line diagram, explaining each component and the role in managing the distribution of high voltage power. So let's get started. Great, so this is your overview. So you've got incoming power and outgoing supply that must be fed to some feeders or ready for another transmission line. So the purpose here is now to break down all these steps here, what's going on here in a switch yard. So let's start from the beginning here. Great, so here you've got your incoming uh, 400 kilovolt line with a 100 megavolt ampere short circuit power entering the substation. This high voltage is either coming from your main substation, transmission substation, or from your generation power plant. Once it enters the substation, the goal here is to manage, protect, and step down this power to a safe distribution level. So as it enters here, the first element it encounters is a surge arrester. The surge arrester have got only one job here to basically prevent high voltage spike from damaging certain equipment now despite the fact that we've got a 400 kilovolt line entering here we still want to protect our substation from high voltage spike that's why we're going to place a surge arrester here and that surge arrester must be rated to 400 kilovolt so that it can allow that 400 kilovolt to pass through without clamping it but a voltage higher than that must be clamped after going through the surge arrester then our power encounter here the cvt capacitor voltage transformer. This component basically measure the high voltage and convert it to a lower manageable signal. This signal will then be used for protection relays and metering systems. Now this CVT must operate in real time. It need to monitor this 400 kilovolt uh, voltage, right? So that at any given time, it must alert the protective equipment here whether this voltage is either going down or going low because the power system we need to ensure that there is voltage stability so that is what the cvt is basically doing there then after that the next component here is the line trap now what is a line trap now think of it like a filter right so your man's power here is operating at a 50 hertz or 60 hertz frequency depending on where you are watching this tutorial right so we've got communication lines that sometimes are running uh, next to power lines okay and we do not want those communication lines that are running at 150 kilohertz or so to basically infiltrate or enter our power lines because that will then cause disturbances to the power system so we then place this line trap here that will basically block those high frequency signal from entering the system and only allow the 50 or 60 hertz signal to enter the power station. So this is your low pass filter. So the 50 hertz here will basically be the cutoff frequency for the line trap. Now the next component on the line here is the earth link. And we've got a CT and another earth link coupled with an isolator. So basically the city here is surrounded by two earth links with an isolator. So before we talk about the earth link, let's first discuss the current transformer here that basically stand between uh, the circuit. So you break the current path to insert the current transformer and your circuit continue functioning. So this device, just like the CVT here that measure the voltage, the city measure the high current that flowing on the main bus bar here. Then it converts it to a lower secondary current that must then be sent to the relay. Now this current, just like the CVT here, send it to measuring devices. The current transformer also will send that current signal to relay component that will then trigger the circuit breaker in case there is a high fault current flowing through the circuit. So in short, the current transformer convert a high current signal to a lower current that will then be used for protective relays and measuring equipment. So we also need to know how much current is flowing here. And I don't have to repeat myself, so measuring that current is very important. It's crucial so that we can monitor overload condition and short circuit condition. Then we've got this earth link 
and the one couple with an isolator here. Now, this earth link here basically just provide a shorter path to earth. In case there is a short circuit current, the earth link can protect this equipment by providing the shortest path to earth. Then we've got this earth link here that is now linked with an isolator. So what is the function of these two here? Well, the function is very simple. The isolator basically disconnect the one section of the circuit to allow maintenance work to take place. So we've got a 400 volt uh, potential here. And if we want to work in this section, we can simply disconnect here. We isolate that high voltage section and we start performing work here. But now when we isolate this section, this section here, we need to basically off the disconnector itself so that we can allow for a safer environment to work. So we can't just basically disconnect and let it float. No, that is not going to be fulfilling the safety requirement. So we need to disconnect and then earth link. It. That is why you can see here, you've got the disconnector with an earth link attached to it. And right here, we've got a picture of an earth link, basically a metal bar that will then be used to basically connect a section of the circuit to ground. Great, now we move on to bus bar one. So we encounter the first bus bar that is now holding that 400 kilovolt power. Then we've got another second bus bar that is also at a 400 level because we do not have a transformer here yet. But we've got disconnectors and earthling to basically isolate these two sections. On this bus bar, we've got a CVT that must perform the same function as this CVT. And on bus bar two, we also have a CVT that also need to perform the same function then we can see that before the first bus bar we've got a circuit breaker cb1 and after the second bus bar we've got another circuit breaker cb2 now this is all to basically allow protection and isolation so it's double protection and triple protection that is very important because you are dealing with a very high voltage so you cannot take chances so what basically these two circuit breaker do now it's simple they will disconnect the circuit if there is a fault condition or an overload condition. How do they do that? They're going to get a signal coming from the city here. This current transformer will send a signal to the city or this current transformer will send a signal to the city and it will disconnect to basically break the current path. Now, before we continue down uh, our one line diagram here, you may ask a question, but why do we have uh, two bus bars here? They are both at the same potential, right? As I've already explained that, you can disconnect and isolate these two sections here, this section and this section. But also, this bus bar, they basically serve as connection point. So you can connect a transmission line at this point to send the 400 volt to another location after going in through some measuring phases here. At the same time, you can also connect a transmission line at this point, just like we've got this line here. That is why we need this bus bar here. And we've got a circuit breaker that must also be there to provide the protection at all time. Great, now after this CB2, then our power encounter another current transformer. Then it encounter this earth link that basically plays a same role as this earth link here to connect the circuit to provide the shortest path to ground for our circuit. Then we get a surge arrestor. Now this is a very important part here. We've got a power transformer here. We can call it a main component of this substation here. Okay, now all components are very crucial because you need protection, you need measurement, you need everything must be ensured so that we can ensure a safe operation of the power transformer. Now, just a quick side note here. So you'll understand that a lot can be said about these components. I'm being very limited here, right? So if you want to know more about surge arresters, earth link, circuit breakers, isolators, power transformers, and so forth. I have provided a link in the description box that will lead you to a playlist on my channel. The playlist is for components of an electrical substation or substation component. Or if you land yourself on my channel page, 
under the playlist tab you just need to scroll down here and you're going to find substation component playlist the last update is five days ago click on it and in here you've got detailed tutorial about all these component power transformers step changes circuit breakers lightning arrestor which is actually a surge arrestor also a circuit switcher and high voltage fuses so basically most of these components in very much great detail and this playlist is being updated every now and then and if you've got more time to spend on my channel under the community tab you're going to find lots of nice tutorial quizzes basically on most of the topics covered on my channel if you scroll all the way down you're gonna find a quiz relating to power system if that's what you are interested so basically here i'm saying which of the following is not the type of prime mover used in power generation so if you know what is a prime mover you're going to see this question and you realize which one is not the prime mover and you're gonna select the answer if you get the wrong answer then i'm providing an explanation for the correct answer that way you're going to learn a lot more now moving back to the presentation at hand t1 the power transformer is basically at the heart of the switchyard it converts the 400 kilovolt to 132 kilovolt ready for the transmission line or for the feeders and it has a rating of 500 mega volt ampere and surrounded are two surge arresters now the purpose of these two surge arresters is basically the same one as the one on the incoming of the switchyard. So this one here is a 400 kilovolt rated surge arrestor because this section is still at the 400 kilovolt level. So it must clamp voltage higher than 400 kilovolt. Then at the secondary of our transformer, we've got a third surge arrestor which is then rated at 132 kilovolt the level of this bus bar here now this one need to ensure it must ensure that the voltage is clamped once it tries to go above 132 kilovolt this is to ensure that the feeders and elements that are connected on this bus bar are always supplied with the correct voltage level now, before we talk about what's going to happen here now, after we've stepped down the 132 kilovolt, what is the next stage? Please make sure you give this tutorial a thumbs up if you found it useful and subscribe to SimTech channel. That will be highly appreciated. Then finally, we encounter the outgoing supply, which is now stepped down at a level of 132 kilovolt. This supply can go to a transmission line or directly be fed to consumers now mind you the consumer at home is expecting a 230 volt rms or 120 volt rms he's not expecting 132 kilovolt so this basically means this voltage must go through another transformation stage so that will be the subject of the upcoming tutorial that is why you need to ensure that you subscribe so you can uh, stay on the lookout for that. So basically this tutorial was a summary of what's going on in a switchyard substation, a 400 kilovolt, right? All the critical components that need to perform the work through the measuring and protective equipment, circuit breaker, and the main guy on the switchyard here, which is the power transformer. So that will be it for this tutorial. In the next tutorial, we're going to cover the 132 kilovolt to 66 kilovolt switch yard. So make sure you stay tuned for that tutorial. Until next time, cheers.